morning, my lovelies. Welcome back to Bible Story Interviews. To start off, we have an awesome two-year-old who said his memory verse from last week. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 6. Let's take a look. Trust not all heart, lean all sending, lean all sending, await Great job, Liam. You are doing a great job memorizing your verses each week. All of you kids are. Let's ask my students who their favorite person from the Bible is. Mine is Queen Esther. Hi, I'm Jeremy. My favorite person in the Bible would be David because he defeated Goliath and became king. Hi, I'm Lily and my favorite person from the Bible is Mary, Jesus' mother. I think it's so cool that she was Jesus' mom. Hi, I'm Maggie and my favorite person in the Bible would be, um, Hannah. Because she was a mom, and I want to be a mom. So, yep, my favorite was Hannah. What's up, dogs and doggeritos? Obviously, my favorite person in the Bible is Jesus. He's pretty awesome. Today, we will learn our Bible story, go visit some guests from the past, learn our memory verse, and our ponder point. I wonder what we're learning about this week. Today, we are going to learn about a man named Naaman and a little servant girl. What is that about? That is precisely why we are going to be learning about it. Let's learn the story. There once was a man named Naaman. He was a very important man within the army in a big country. Naaman had become very sick he became sick with something known as leprosy. What's leprosy? Leprosy is an awful disease that stops you from feeling anything, and it can cause pieces of you, such as a smashed finger or a toe, to fall off. It may sound like a silly disease, but it was most definitely very serious. There used to be no cure, and it would cause you to die in the end. What did Naaman do? Now, Naaman had a servant girl that worked for him. Naaman led an army to her home of Israel, killed her family, and took her home to be his servant. Oh no! That's terrible! This poor girl was suffering a loss because of this awful man, but she knew of someone that could help him. This little girl did not have hate for Naaman, for what he had done, but she forgave him and wanted to help him. It's crazy that she forgave him. Did she help him? The servant girl told Naaman of a man in Israel named Elisha, who could heal Naaman. Naaman agreed to go and loaded up his wagons, and he got on his best armor. He believed that he was so important that he went to the palace instead of the place where Elisha was. What did he do inside of the palace? He rushed into the palace and declared that he should be healed. The king said to Naaman that only God can heal. That's so selfish to think that he can demand to be healed. It was. A message from Elisha arrived for Naaman to come to him. So. Naaman left for Elisha's house, but Elisha sent out a servant to meet Naaman instead. Naaman was appalled by this because he believed himself to be so important, too important for a servant. He was not being very kind at all. No, he was not. This servant told Naaman that in order for his disease to go away, he must wash in the river. Naaman got very upset because anybody could wash in that river. But he was someone special. He must have some special way to heal himself instead. He has something wrong with his head. He's very rude. Eventually, 
He set aside his pride and he agreed to wash in the river. Instantly, he was washed clean and his leprosy disappeared. It just disappeared? It did. Naaman then wished to pay for Elisha for healing him and Elisha refused. It was not he who healed Naaman, but God. And at that moment, a very sick man was healed and his pride was no more. This was all because of a little servant girl who decided to forgive Naaman for all the things he had done. Wow, that's amazing. It sure is. And that sound means it's time to go visit our guests for the day. Let's go. Are we at the river from the story? We are. Who are we gonna talk to today? First, we are going to be talking to a very special animal that witnessed Naaman's healing. This is Wally the Warthog. Wally, say hello to my students. Hi kids. Your teacher tells me that you would like to know some of what I saw today. What would you like to know? Everything. Well, it all started with this weird man who had some stuff all over his skin. He walked around telling people what to do and what not to do. He was so upset when the person told him to go take a bath in my river. He refused at first, but then he came back. This time, he was a lot kinder. And when he went into the water, all the stuff on his skin washed off. He got out of the water all better and praised the Lord for it. Wow, God healed him. I would say he did more than that. I think he healed his heart as well as his body. Who are we going to talk to now? Our second guest of the day will speak to us about his experiences with this event. Let's speak to the man himself, Naaman. Hello, everybody. God healed your heart, huh? He did. I was so wrong to treat people the way that I did. I was a broken man that needed the Lord's forgiveness and then the forgiveness of the people around me. When he healed me, he taught me a lesson that I will never forget. That's so wonderful. Thank you for telling us your story. Let's go back to our time to discuss it. Let's learn our memory verse for this week. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 36, 19. When we read this verse, we can think of what God did for Naaman. Naaman was not only healed of his leprosy, he was healed of a prideful heart. God showed him what he should do. God taught him a lesson? Yes, he did. He taught Naaman that we don't have to be important for God to do big things, that he sees us all the same, and that he wants to heal us on the inside. And that brings us to our ponder point for the day. God can give us a new heart. That doesn't mean a real heart, does it? No, it means like our attitudes, the way we act, and the way we think. God can change it all. He wants to give me a new heart? He wants to give us all new hearts. He wants us to turn away from all of the bad things and turn to Him to become like a new person. I want God to give me a new heart. How does that happen? God can give you a new heart when you pray and ask for one. Join with me now and pray. Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you have done. Please take out our hard and awful hearts and give us new, bright, clean ones. Forgive us for what we've done and let us grow closer to you through this all. We love you, we thank you, we praise you. In your name, 
Amen. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. This was Bible Story Interviews, and I will see you next week. Bye!